welcome in. Tonight, I've got a boost control solenoid that I need wired and I'm gonna put some weather pack connectors on the end of it. These are really handy, somewhat inexpensive, good quality weather tight connectors that we're gonna to apply to this. And I wanted to show just uh, how easy it is to crimp one of these. It may seem daunting to someone who's never done it, but really all you need is like a $25 crimper from Amazon. They obviously have specific ones for weather packs that are really quality, but these ones work actually really well. I'll put a link to the description in the, in the video here. And then you can use just regular wire strippers. These ones are pretty nice. You can just set the depth where you want it. So I have these, but if you just have the most basic ones, you could still do the job. I also have some flush cut cutters. Um, not necessary, you just need some sort of cutter. And these, um, they do have one right here, but it's just nice to have a separate cutter for me. So let's get started. And this is just the boost control solenoid that we're working with. And just got a couple wires on the end. I already put some heat shrink tubing on it and twisted it. The reason you twist something like this is to make it more flexible and so that it doesn't pull and strain on the ends. So when it's twisted, the wires kind of fold over each other and they don't pull tension on one or the other uh, as easily. So just go ahead and twist it up and have some heat shrink on it. This isn't like mil spec DR25, but it is a good quality heat shrink that will keep it alive. It's not gonna be um, in a really oily part of the engine bay. It'll just be over on the side. So hopefully this will hold it up and the weather pack connectors will keep it nice and dry. So let's jump into it. For this particular connector, I'm gonna leave um, these guys just a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna cut them both the same length. In real life, just to show an example, if you're cutting through wires, it's best to never cut through two wires at the same time, just in case one of them was powered and it grounded out. So as you're cutting it, you're grounding the other side. That's just something you can use as a practical guide for pretty much any wiring. It's best practice to cut one at a time, but being that this is an endpoint and there's no power to it, it's fairly safe to do that. So uh, we're gonna just start here by connecting one of the weather packs and we're only gonna need one side for this uh, as the other side's gonna be in the car. But you might think, well, what side should I put on the female side or the male side? And it is best practice, according to a lot of professionals that I've talked to, to put the male pins on the end point, uh, on the sensor side. And the reason that is, is because if the male, point, the male pins are exposed in some connectors, if for some reason the connector came disconnected and the male pins were exposed, if they touched anything metallic, they wouldn't short out anything that had power. The, the side that is connected to the harness that would have power would have the female ends and there wouldn't be anything that it could touch against in the engine bay to cause that issue. So we're just gonna put this to the side and get the female ends over there and we'll only focus on the male ends. So the way these work um, is they have the pin itself and then they have this insulator and the insulator gets crimped to the pin as part of it, has a strain relief. And then you crimp the inside to the wire. So the wire, if we just set these up, you're gonna wanna just first put the insulators on. That's the very first thing that makes this job really easy. And they can be really tight depending on what gauge wire you have. These red ones are for 18 to 20 gauge. So we're looking real good where we're at here. And you just pull them back a little bit like this. And the reason you put these on first is if you, if you strip these and then you try to put these on, the little pieces of wire try to go through the, uh, the silicone seal and they'll, they can cut and otherwise damage the seal if you, if you get them in there crooked and then it would compromise the waterproof aspect of the seal. So really all we're gonna want is, we're gonna want maybe like a quarter inch of this to be 
we're just trying to lay this in here and have the have about a quarter inch into that crimp zone right there. So we'll get the strip tool. I'm actually gonna pull these back a little bit more because I could probably do both of these at the same time if I'm careful. So we'll come in here and lay them in there. They're not actually going as well as I thought to at the same time. So we'll just come in here, try to grab that. This one actually is dual layered, it looks like. So we're gonna do that twice. It's actually, now that I'm looking at it, I kinda wanna go a little bit more on that one. So we're just gonna peel it back just a touch more. So this guy will go a little bit more. Yep. Okay. That's looking a little bit better. This guy, I think because I had already tried it twice, uh, just was fighting me just a little bit, so. This is kind of an unstandard type of wiring from an inexpensive Mac solenoid that I, that may or may not be legitimate. But yeah, just give these guys a little twist and we're gonna lay that in there and see if it's enough. Yep, it looks like it's gonna be just fine on that one. And this other one, really it really wants like just a little bit more in this case I honestly wish I had my other crimpers because or sorry my other stripping tool because there we go it honestly this one isn't biting as much as I would like it to there we go so sometimes you have to do that it's just part of the process if you're if you don't do it all the time and it's uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult but basically you want this seal all the way up to the edge where the wire starts right here or where the where the jacket ends and the wire begins so i'm just really picky so i'm just grabbing every little bit of that excess um there we go just that excess jacketing okay so we're good to go now these right here they have a bunch of different sizes and this 18 to 20 is what we're going to use um basically they they have a, a wedge and then they have a socket. And this tool, the, the, the wedge actually sits on the back side, And as you can see, it'll just fold up those two halves and they crunch together. So in here, they sit like this. And as you squeeze them, they crunch and fold onto each other just like that. So hard to kind of explain in that way, but once you do one of them, you will totally understand and you'll see. And then the jacket, the jacket of the um, seal right there just goes around the edge right here, just up to this. So make sure you have this pushed all the way up into there. I'm just gonna, to make it a little bit easier to show, I'm just gonna bring it like that. We'll use the 18 to 20 and just put it right on the back side of that and go ahead make sure everything's good and just crimp and there we go and then you always want to do a, a test to make sure that the crimp was good so you just give it a little bit of strain just pull on it and make sure that the crimp is not going to come loose you can double check it by just putting it back on there, making sure that it's crimped all the way until it's bottomed out where you can feel it. And that right there is a good connection. You can feel it. Next part is this. Um, my particular tool doesn't have, they have this little bit of a cove on the correct tool that has every bit that's specific to weather pack, but this is kind of a generic weather pack tool or a generic crimping, uh, like open, open crimping tool that that does stuff similar to this so it isn't actually a hundred percent the best weather pack tool um, but it still works so you can just use the largest the 14 to 18 and kind of squeeze this in there set it in and you can see right here it'll just fold like that and it pinches it just fine so 
This does work, uh, but they have one that's a little more specific. It has like a half moon that's more specifically shaped to these, but it is definitely crimped down on that seal and it is not going anywhere. So we'll just go ahead and do the next one. And I don't know about you, but I actually find this quite enjoyable. I'll sit and do a bunch of these and it actually is somewhat relaxing sometimes. So I know people that do this for a living probably are like, yeah, it gets boring after a while and you won't like it, but um, yeah, do a little strain test. But this is actually pretty enjoyable in my opinion. I like doing wiring stuff like this where it's, you can do it indoors where you're in a, a controlled environment, turn some tunes on and just, just relax to whatever work you have to do. And sometimes like with this, you just have to squeeze them in just to fit the, the socket right there. So you can see it kind of smashes into the socket and just squeeze it until it's get this actually right here just this bigger one there we go i think i actually had done one of the smaller ones but we're at a disregard to having the not the perfect tool it actually works really well and you've got a good connection right there so really all we're going to do next is you can decide these connectors on the back they actually say a and b just make sure you know if it's specific to polarization where you're putting it these are solenoid, so they can be used either direction, at least per this one in particular. So positive and negative could be on either side. So in my case, I'm not really too concerned about it. So I'm just going to push it in and you'll hear it click. So you just give it a nice push and you'll hear it click like that. And it's all the way seated. And then this guy, push it in. You hear that nice and firm. Look inside, make sure that everything looks correct and that the seals are all the way in. And uh, it's got this little lock that keeps them from coming out. So when you're 100% certain, just give this little strain test, pull on it. Once something's crimped like this, don't be afraid to, um, to give it a little tug. That's what you want. You wanna know that it's not gonna come undone when it's in the car. And then right here, you can see a clip just like that. And there you go. We've done a weather pack connector. It is ready to go. So next one we're gonna do, it's gonna be the rest of the female connector that'll be on the wiring harness, but that's later to come. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Just a quick little tutorial on how to do weather pack connectors for your basic automotive connectors in a lot of performance and rewiring applications in uh, classic cars in modern too. Really, this is just a good uh, weatherproof connector that you can use for any type of connection. I will put a link to in the description for these. These are from ProWire USA. You can get them on Amazon and other places, but uh, I just happened to be doing an order from ProWire and I got it from them. So thanks again for watching enjoy and if you like this kind of content you like hanging out and just learning how to do simple wiring and automotive tips and tricks like this consider subscribing and becoming a member and if you're just watching one time and don't think you'll revisit you could consider doing a super thanks and donating a small one-time donation so it all helps the channel thanks for everything see you next time